welcome to this special episode of Across the Balkans. I'm Nafi Salatic. Kosovo's deadline to reach a deal with Serbia is fast approaching. Both countries are under enormous pressure from the international community to sign a so-called Franco-German proposal on the normalization of relations. The deal, strongly supported by the EU and US, also aims to defuse tensions between Kosovo's Serbian minority and ethnic Albanians that have heightened in recent months. For the West, the agreement has become a key priority in the aftermath of Russia's attack on Ukraine and growing fears about its spillover effects on the Balkans. Although the deal doesn't mention Serbia's recognition of Kosovo, it aims to lay the foundation for future dialogue. But Kosovo's Prime Minister Albin Kurti doubled down on his position that Serbia must recognize his nation's sovereignty before he considers any proposal offering autonomy to local Serbs. He warned that he won't be blackmailed into signing any agreement. His Excellency Kosovo's Prime Minister Albin Kurti joins us here in the studio for an exclusive interview. Mr. Kurti, great to have you with us and thank you for your time for Across the Balkans. Thank you for having me. You are facing a lot of pressure these days, Mr. Kurti, to accept uh, the EU-US proposal. Um, do you see this latest push by the international community as an opportunity for Kosovo? I think it is very good that uh, finally uh, Brussels, Washington DC, uh, Paris, Berlin, Rome are very much uh, engaged in bringing full normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia with a legally binding agreement centered on mutual recognition. And to that end, uh, I see also the EU proposal uh, which I uh, welcomed as a good basis for further discussions. And I hope that with intensified high-level meetings, besides this current uh, shuttle diplomacy, uh, we are going to come to an agreement uh, which will uh, finally uh, improve relations towards uh, uh, Europeanizing them, uh, towards uh, full normalization, uh, because uh, Kosovo is a normal country, but I must admit that our relations with Serbia are not that normal. Uh, yes, we, we know that. Um, the U.S., in order to uh, come to the point where you actually sign this proposal, you also are urged to form uh, an association of the Serb municipalities in the north of your country. Uh, this was agreed by the previous government of Kosovo uh, back in 2013, but it is binding for you as well. I feel like that at the beginning you were rejecting, the, uh, rejecting it strongly, but now you have your own idea on how could this association look like. Does that mean you are closer to, to, to accepting that? Uh, prior to me coming to power, uh, to office as prime minister, uh, there has been one decade of talks of dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia under the auspices of Brussels. Uh, there has been signed altogether 33 agreements and one of them is this agreement um, of uh, principles where six points out of 15 uh, are about uh, what is now uh, known as Association of Serb Majority Municipalities. On the other hand, all previous agreements are being referred in the last sentence of the last article of EU proposal that we are supposed to negotiate now with Belgrade. So, uh, of course, I do not negate that there has been such agreement, but there should not be any cherry picking out of 33 agreements, the one that you like most, neither uh, to have a an approach where you put the cart before the horse, because there are other articles prior to this uh, last one. But the US specifically is insisting on this one. Yes, it is true. Belgrade is insisting, first of all. Yes, of course. And uh, I have said that uh, uh, any kind of association uh, of municipalities in Kosovo must be in full compliance with the constitution and law but also we cannot have a one ethnic association. 
because that would be against the spirit and letter of our constitution. So mono-ethnic associations uh, are not uh, acceptable. Uh, in addition, I believe that uh, if Serbia wants association of municipalities in Kosovo based on, uh, let's say, ethnicity, they should first think uh, to do it at home because there are much more minorities in type and number in Serbia than in Kosovo. In Kosovo, we have 93% of the population Albanians, 4% Serbs, and 3% are Bosniaks, Turks, uh, Ashkali, Egyptians, Roma, and Gorani. Whereas in Serbia, almost 20% are minorities. So uh, if yes, they insist, just, uh, they should try it at home first. Um, yes, we know Serbia's position on this. This is one of the stepping stones for them, their main, one of their main conditions. But also lately we are hearing from the US officials specific push on this topic in order to proceed with the rest of the proposal. Uh, the, the U.S. Special Representative uh, Gabriel Escobar even said that this is not the decision between you, Mr. Kurti, and Serbia. He just said that in the last couple of hours, but the decision between Serbia and Kosovo. Uh, what does this mean? You already said you will not accept any blackmails. Is this a blackmail toward, towards well, you? Well, uh, obviously, Mr. Escobar is very active and very involved, and I welcome that. I met him several times. Uh, we have to be careful and we have to be fair. And what I'm uh, laying out as principles, as conditions uh, for any kind of association uh, are not my uh, arbitrary uh, stances or my personal thinking. Uh, will of the people in Kosovo, constitutionality and lawfulness uh, are those which uh, made me say that first we need mutual recognition and only then any kind of uh, association. And let us not forget our bitter experience from Bosnia and Herzegovina. 14 municipalities with Serb majority got together in April 1991. In January 1992, they declared independence. In February 1992, they got their constitution. And then we had war, and in the end, and Republika still have Srpska unstable Bosnia and Herzegovina yes, with Republika Srpska came as, out of this association as part of so. it. But what I do want to ask you, I know that the, the conditions and the atmosphere was different, but can you compare this proposal with, for example, Dayton Agreement, and also Republika Srpska with the association that was proposed? Uh, to you, is, are there any similarities between two? And why you re, why you 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 mentioned several times you don't want new Republika Srpska uh, in the Balkans? Uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because Belgrade wants another Republika Srpska, uh, because uh, via an autonomous entity within their neighbor, they try to render that state into a failed one, and uh, in this way to implement what they call now, not Greater Serbia, but Serbian world. So basically it is a hegemony of one center against neighbors by instrumentalizing one minority. We have several minorities in Kosovo. We cannot have a super minority. Uh, citizens must be equal because Kosovo is a republic. So uh, I explain this uh, with a lot of patience to all uh, European and American partners and friends. And I think that uh, EU proposal is not proposal about association of Serb majority municipalities. Again, only the last sentence of the last article of this proposal refers to all previously signed agreements, and there are 33 of them, not only one of them, namely agreement on association, well, which did not pass the proposal has not been made public. You've court. seen it, Mr. Vucic has seen it, probably. Mm -hmm. Uh, the U.S. Uh, and the EU representatives, so we can just guess what's in it. All we know is it doesn't mention mutual recognition. So it's still, for you, it's an option, even though it doesn't mention the mutual recogni recognition, this particular proposal. Uh, I said this is a good basis for further discussion because it uh, implies sort of a de facto recognition and it recalls universal notions and concepts like independence, territorial 
integrity, sovereignty, UN Charter, rule of law, self-determination, democracy, EU integration, these but are you, the things you, that you we adhere to. You said you have six to. conditions for this association, how it's supposed to look like. But by reading it, we, we can all see that it doesn't seem like Serbia will accept it. One of the, one of the, one of the conditions is that the, the association won't be created be, uh, uh, before Serbia recognizes uh, Kosovo, which are not likely to happen. So it means we are again back to square one. Mr. Well, I, uh, I said this uh, earlier on that asking for association without recognizing Kosovo is like asking for a coffee without a cup. I'm not able to bring coffee without a cup. The state is the cup. But uh, the West is, uh, the, the EU and the US are pushing for this proposal, especially now in the wake of Russia's attack on Ukraine to go through. They are even uh, warning about the isolation of both countries, not just Kosovo, but Serbia as well. Uh, can Kosovo afford uh, this kind of, uh, to be isolated actually now in a time of crisis? Uh, of course, we should not and we will not be isolated. We applied for membership in Council of Europe in May last year. In December last year, we applied for membership in EU. Uh, our uh, country progress report uh, of last year is the best since we declared independence. So EU is evaluating economic growth, democratic progress in our country, and especially uh, our... Uh, development uh, regarding rule of law. For example, uh, according to Transparency International Corruption Perception Index, in the last uh, two years, we have advanced in the fight against corruption by 20 places upwards for good. Then, regarding rule of law, we are number one in Western Balkans for the second year. And you are not concerned that this might change if the US continues to push for association that regardless of your condition, you are not likely to accept anytime soon. And we've just seen scuffles in Serbian parliament as well, not enough political will in Belgrade to accept this uh, at the moment. Um, I do have to ask you in the wake of everything that's happening uh, in Ukraine, we've heard from uh, President uh, Vucic just in the last couple of days saying that there might be even uh, a possibility of Serbia uh, sanctioning Russia uh, this could be also a part of the U.S. and the EU push to uh, come to some kind of agreement between you and him. Do you believe that Serbia is ready to, to change in some way, and especially when it comes to its relations with Russia in the wake of this proposal? Uh, their links with Russia are deep and broad, are historical, cultural, economic, and military ones. Uh, I think that they have made a choice, and that is that they are aligning themselves with Kremlin. Whether there will be enough courage or willingness or interest in Belgrade to change this choice, I do not know. But uh, I think that uh, uh, last year they've done three very important agreements with Kremlin. First was in uh, May, when they got very cheap gas. Second one was in September when uh, Mr. Stefanovic with Mr. Lavrov uh, in New York at the margins of uh, United Nations General Assembly meeting, they made an agreement according to which Belgrade and Moscow coordinate with each other regarding foreign policy. And then in November last year, the most pro-Russian Serbian politician uh, Vulin became the head of uh, intelligence yes, and secret service. Yes, but recently service. we are we are hearing from President Vucic a different uh, narrative. Um, it seems like the relations with Moscow has been changed. Uh, but even if this happens, would it it be better to accept this proposal? Would this prevent uh, Russian influence in the region that you and officials in Pristina also call malign? Uh, Belgrade regime during Milosevic uh, did genocide in Kosovo, not Russians, it was Belgrade. So if they disconnect their links with Moscow is half good, 
The other half must be acknowledging crimes that they committed during the war in Kosovo and recognizing our independence. So basically, it's not enough, even if they will do that. But so far, we have seen, at best, words. I'm talking about hardware, not software. 56% of oil industry of Serbia is owned by Gazprom. The regional base for Sputnik is in Belgrade. So I do but not we are see concrete again, elements tensions, while we, We've seen tensions in the, in the past couple of months, Mr. Kurti. Aren't you concerned that this might continue if you don't come to some kind of agreement with Belgrade now in the wake of this latest push by the international community? I do not think that destabilizing attempts have to do only with the lack of the agreement, but with the character of the Serbian state which does not want to face its own past and which considers Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro and Kosovo to be temporary states. So they recognize de jure Bosnia and Herzegovina, but de facto they fight it every day, similarly to Montenegro. And now EU and US are trying to get some sort of de facto recognition between Kosovo and uh, Serbia. But again, this is not happening because of me but because of Belgrade. We are a normal democratic country. Belgrade, Serbia is a hybrid regime, even according to Freedom House. But why then is the West pushing for these kind of mono-ethnic entities in the Balkans? We've seen what happened with Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, there, the country is still is extremely unstable and one of the, the soft spots for Europe's security in the wake of the war in Ukraine. So why then to push to something similar in Kosovo again if it was proved that it's not functioning actually for these kind of societies? Well, I must say that this is the question that others will have to answer. But nonetheless, I can um, guess that uh, uh, pretty often it looks like uh, a deal is behind the corner. So let's do it in the fastest way. But I think that the problems that we have in the Balkans uh, have depth, and that has to do with our recent history. So I believe that we should learn from history, not repeat mistakes, and that means that we should take very seriously the late, uh, very important American diplomat, Richard Holbrook, who regretted in 2005 that 10 years before that, in 1995, it was allowed this entity within Bosnia and Herzegovina to be called Republic, to be called Republika Srpska. Uh, recently, Serbia has been arming itself uh, a lot. Uh, that has been made public, especially again, uh, we are approaching to one year anniversary of Russia's attack on Ukraine. Does that worry you, especially now when we've seen tensions on the border and Seems like this proposal, again, uh, will need more time to, to be discussed. And we are, again, not approaching to more peaceful solutions in the I region. Think, uh, I think Belgrade is nervous because in spite of them not recognizing us, last year, for example, we had 4% of GDP economic growth after you subtract the inflation. Exports grew by 23%. Foreign direct investment by 44%. And uh, we have really fight successfully corruption. We destroyed 69 criminal gangs. In the northern part of Kosovo, we destroyed five drug laboratories, and we eliminated 16 illegal pathways which were used for smuggling. And this makes Belgrade nervous. And they are rendering more active around border of Kosovo, 48 forward operation bases, 28 of them military and 20 gendarmeria. So yes, we are worried, we are concerned, but we are not afraid. Kosovo is strengthening its army. Last year, we have increased the budget for our defense by 52%, and this year, with the state annual budget, another 20%. And we are going to participate in Defender Europe 23 during this upcoming spring with altogether, altogether 1,365 uh, soldiers. So Kosovo is still not in NATO. We want to become members there. How significant NATO is, is NATO Kosovo. membership? Is it more significant NATO membership, uh, having in mind everything that's happening in Europe, 
than the EU membership. For Kosovo and Bosnia both, as we've seen those two countries more prone to uh, instabilities. Well, for us both are very important, joining NATO and joining EU. But we live at times when also EU wants to join NATO, for example, Sweden and Finland. So uh, NATO is a security umbrella that is needed all over the continent, and in particular in uh, the Balkans, where Kremlin has a client regime, namely Belgrade. Can Turkey help speed that process of uh, Kosovo in NATO? You came here in Istanbul on invitation uh, of the President Erdogan. Uh, did, was this discussed? Did you ask for help from Ankara? Uh, yes, uh, uh, President Erdogan. He really uh, uh, wants to support Kosovo. And I'm very thankful for the contribution of Republic of Turkey throughout these years. And uh, uh, many of our soldiers have been uh, exercising uh, and uh, being trained in Turkey. And also, uh, we uh, are going to uh, increase our uh, military cooperation, economic cooperation, trade exchange. And uh, uh, Turkey is helping us both regarding membership in Council of Europe, but also membership of NATO, where partnership for peace is the first uh, and very important milestone. Uh, did you discuss the recent proposal uh, with President Erdogan? He has an excellent ties with Belgrade as well. Uh, Serbia and Turkey have reached the highest level of cooperation in the recent years. How can Un They have excellent uh, relations with Pristina as well. Can Ankara also help mediate uh, this current situation? Um, Ankara uh, is not neutral. They recognize independence of Kosovo. On the first day. On the first day. <laughs> yeah. So in this sense, mediators are more neutral. And uh, we do the mediation with uh, Mr. Lajcak and Mr. Borrell in Brussels. Uh, however, uh, Turkey, United States, uh, Germany, France, Italy, uh, Scandinavian countries, UK, they are on the side of Kosovo because they have recognized our uh, independence. But nonetheless, I think that uh, uh, President Erdogan knows very well the region and he was interested to know more about this EU proposal. And I have explained to him what are some of the uh, key elements and um, we have his support for the way forward towards full normalization of relations. Share with us, what is the way forward, uh, Mr. Kurti? We are approaching uh, yet another anniversary of independence of Kosovo, 17th of February. So what, what happens next? What will you say to the U.S. representatives in Pristina when it comes to this proposal? If they keep um, repeating that you will have to accept some kind of self-autonomy of Serbs in the north of your country? Uh, Serbs are not asking for autonomy. Belgrade is fighting our independence. Uh, so what I look uh, forward is high-level meetings in order to uh, clarify more future agreement, which should happen sooner rather than later. But again, an agreement which will have as its centerpiece mutual recognition because President Biden and Chancellor Schultz both mentioned that full normalization of relations implies mutual recognition. We do not recognize Serbia is because the of their constitution. They the, do not recognize us because of our constitution. Is the mutual recognition your main condition for any agreement with Serbia? Is this the, the first thing that you, you need to agree upon? In the last decade, there has been 33 agreements in Brussels without mutual recognition. Two thirds of them have not been implemented by Serbia. So you can have more agreements, technical agreements like but in the past. But they claim you haven't implemented you the one from 2013 and created an association that was agreed by the previous government. Because that agreement did not pass the test of constitutional court, it failed. 23 articles of our constitution have been violated by that agreement. 
On the other hand, President of Serbia violated the agreement because he made all Serbs collectively resign from state institutions of Kosovo. And he wrote letters to Spain, Slovakia, Romania, Cyprus, and Greece not to accept application of Kosovo for EU membership, which is violation of po point 14 of his most dearest agreement. So basically, they are insisting on an agreement which they did not ratify in their parliament and in a double manner, in a double manner they have already violated. And Mr. Kurti, I have just 10 seconds left. What would you say to those countries who still haven't recognized Kosovo uh, as this, this is one of your main goals in your premiership? You want to have all the countries on your side uh, soon. What would be your main message to them? Uh, 117 countries uh, recognize us so far, 26 out of 30 in NATO and 22 out of 27 in EU. I call all non-recognizers, join the majority because Kosovo is a success story of democratic and economic progress. Mr. Kurti, great to have you with us. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you. Thanks for watching this special episode of Across the Balkans. See you next time. Bye-bye.